Welcome to Wall Street News Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Time After Time by Chris Atkins Review, a former inmate explores the reasons for reoffending. Fault lines are fast re-emerging in Europe's fragile monetary union. A burglar's guide to keeping your home secure. The pension lump some emergency tax trap that could cost you £13,000. Crypto prodigy to blame the lawyers in the fraud trial of the century. Time After Time by Chris Atkins Review, a former inmate explores the reasons for reoffending. The Guardian. In his book, Time After Time, Repeat Offenders, The Inside Stories, former inmate and filmmaker Chris Atkins explores the reasons why around half of those who leave prison end up returning within a year. Atkins highlights the chaotic and inhumane nature of the prison system as a contributing factor to this high rate of reoffending. He tells the stories of individuals like Steve, who turned to drugs to cope with childhood trauma and found them readily available while in prison. Atkins argues that the system is rigged against those who aspire to change, citing examples of probation conditions that make it impossible for individuals to comply or programs that actually increase the chances of reoffending. While Atkins is never surprised by the inept and malevolent nature of the system, some critics find his simple solutions to be complacent. For example, while Atkins argues that longer prison sentences do not reduce reoffending, he fails to consider evidence suggesting that financial criminals are less likely to reoffend if they spend more time in prison. Atkins also acknowledges his own privilege as a prison writer and filmmaker, acknowledging that his socioeconomic safety net helped him avoid reoffending and that his social capital makes his story more relatable to readers. He calls for solutions such as building social housing, investing in education, and incentivizing therapy by offering prisoners time off their sentences. However, critics argue that his analysis is too general and that he fails to address the complexities of crime and punishment. They question how a successful therapeutic institution like HMP Grendon, which has a small number of inmates in a selective application process, could be expanded to the larger prison system without losing its effectiveness. Overall, while Atkins highlights the failures of the prison system and proposes some potential solutions, critics argue that his analysis lacks depth and fails to fully address the complexities of the issue. Fault lines are fast re-emerging in Europe's fragile monetary union. Telegraph. Europe is facing a challenging economic future as interest rates are set to remain high for longer, increasing debt servicing costs for fiscally challenged governments, according to an op-ed in The Telegraph. The European Central Bank will struggle to provide the support it previously did because of higher interest rates, and the fault lines in the eurozone are re-emerging. Many eurozone countries have not complied with fiscal rules that limit fiscal deficits to 3% of national income and national debt to 60% of GDP over time. Italy and France have made it clear that they have no intention of making spending cuts to align with the Maastricht criteria. The UK is also not immune to higher interest rates, and the government's debt servicing costs are at their highest level since the aftermath of World War II. Germany has enough fiscal space to counter a shrinking economy with tax cuts and spending increases, but the ruling coalition government is unlikely to break with the political consensus of balanced budgets. A Burglar's Guide to Keeping Your Home Secure Telegraph With only 6% of home burglaries in England and Wales being solved, it is becoming increasingly important to prevent these crimes from occurring in the first place. To help homeowners protect their properties, Telegraph Money has sought advice from two experts, Michael Fraser, a former burglar and co-host of the BBC show Beat the Burglar, and Jenny Radcliffe, a security consultant. Fraser advises that homeowners use both locks on their doors, obscure their windows, install a letter box cage, and refrain from leaving their keys in the door. Radcliffe recommends locking away tools and other items that could be used to break into a home, adding spiky plants to fences and walls, and not leaving keys under plant pots or mats. She also suggests delaying burglars by locking valuables away in filing cabinets and not leaving them on display. According to Fraser, CCTV cameras are a big turnoff for burglars, while alarms are a little out of date. He recommends installing a camera that can be connected to a smartphone, allowing homeowners to receive alerts and view videos of any potential intruders. Fraser also warns that having pets can actually attract burglars, who will take advantage of the fact that the alarm is likely to be turned off. Homeowners are advised to be cautious when posting on social media, as burglars can use this information to identify targets. Other tips include changing the locks when moving house and ensuring that windows and doors are kept in good repair. Crypto Prodigy to Blame the Lawyers in the Fraud Trial of the Century Telegraph Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, is set to face trial in the US on charges of conspiracy, fraud, and money laundering. 
prosecutors allege that he misappropriated billions of dollars in FTX customer funds to finance risky bets at a crypto hedge fund, causing the company's bankruptcy. Bankman Fried denies any wrongdoing. The trial, expected to last six weeks, will be closely watched by FTX's 1 million creditors, who are keen to see justice done. If found guilty, Bankman Fried could face up to 115 years in prison. The bull case for emerging markets in 2023 is finally shattering. Bloomberg. Emerging markets have had a tough third quarter, with both stocks and currencies experiencing significant losses. A stronger dollar, rising US yields and China's economic problems have all contributed to the poor performance. Emerging market stocks posted their worst quarter in a year, while currencies have also suffered. Investors have also fled bonds, with both local and hard currency fixed income indexes sliding in Q3. The recent losses have been exacerbated by increased global volatility and concern over China's property crisis. Emerging markets have also been hit by renewed pessimism over the outlook for US interest rates. Special constables in Montreal's metro to be armed with cayenne pepper gel for last resort interventions. CBC. Special constables in Montreal's metro stations will soon be equipped with cayenne pepper gel for use in exceptional circumstances, according to the city's transit authority. The gel will be used as a last resort in cases where safety is at stake. The move has sparked concern among social advocates who support the unhoused and vulnerable populations in the city. While the transit authority says the gel is a tool of de-escalation, critics argue that it deepens the divide between constables and vulnerable individuals and does not address the root cause of homelessness. Ontario gas plants were supposed to run only during peak periods. Instead they're running most of the time, polluting the air you breathe. The Toronto Star. Ontario's clean electricity is getting far dirtier, producing millions of tons of climate-destabilizing carbon emissions and spewing toxic pollutants into the air in some of the most densely populated urban areas in the province. A deep dive into our by our generation data shows the province's 12 biggest gas plants operated nearly 12 hours a day, on average, every day this year. The three GTA gas plants were turned on even more. The Portland's Energy Centre in Toronto, the Goreway Power Station in Brampton and the Halton Hills Generating Station have been in production for an average of 14 hours and 40 minutes a day. This summer, when electricity demand was higher, the GTA plants were fired up more than 19 hours a day. The Portland's plant, located on the waterfront in the heart of downtown Toronto, ran the most, nearly 21 hours a day, all summer long. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your trusty observer from the Sixth Dimension. Today, we explored a wide range of topics, from the reasons for reoffending to the challenges facing Europe's monetary union, from tips on keeping your home secure to the tax trap that retirees face, and from the upcoming trial of a crypto prodigy to the struggles of emerging markets. We also discussed the controversial use of cayenne pepper gel by special constables and the concerning increase in emissions from Ontario's gas plants. Now, let's dig deeper into these stories. In Time After Time, Chris Atkins sheds light on the flaws of the prison system and the factors that contribute to high rates of reoffending. While his proposed solutions have been criticized for being too simplistic, it is important to acknowledge the complexities of crime and punishment. The fault lines in Europe's monetary union are re-emerging, with higher interest rates and fiscal non-compliance threatening the stability of the eurozone. As for home security, it's crucial to take precautions to deter burglars, such as installing locks, using spiky plants, and investing in smart security systems. UK retirees have overpaid in income tax due to the taxman's lack of readiness for pension freedom reforms. The upcoming trial of Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of FTX, will be closely watched by crypto enthusiasts. And finally, emerging markets have been hit hard in recent times, facing losses in stocks, currencies, and bonds. Now, my fellow observers, what are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any burning questions or witty comments to share? The floor is yours. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com.
Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.